The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. And uh, eh, what do we got? Got December 8th, the day after the day after, inf uh, no, just the day after infamy. And uh, we've got uh, okay. what started off to be a very quiet market. The market actually did start to move quite fast after Mr. Lockhart uh, from the FOMC uh, did decide to uh, come out and throw the baby Ruth in the punch bowl uh, by saying this one sentence, it will be a year of transition. I think that's what the market was focused on within... About one minute of that hitting the headline, uh, somewhere around the mid noon, uh, we had a huge move down, at least a huge move for the market lately, uh, off about 18 and a half points on the S&P cash at 2056. Volume, not that exciting, but of course it was kind of quiet before that. Volume picked up a little bit. We're at about uh, 2.27 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. So is volume picked up? The answer is yes. Is it amazing? No. And, uh, eh, actually, um, a little volatility here in the market coming into uh, options expiration cycle starting on Wednesday. Uh, not too uncommon. I'll be very interested to see how uh, we close by the end of the day. Of course, last week we had uh, some decent uh, buying to come in on the uh, uh, fund buying at the end of the month in the first three days. And the way everything felt kind of popped up a little bit, uh, probably most notable, and we've been talking about it for a while, is Apple. Uh, Apple is off uh, three points at uh, 111.79. Uh, we also have seen crude off uh, rather spectacularly. Uh, and um, eh, what are we looking at here on the crude contract? Uh, $63.36. And, of course, uh, a lot of people have been expecting this to bounce. And I keep looking at copper, and I think... You know, normally when we look at a variety of commodities, uh, the old saying is copper has a Ph.D. in economics. And uh, it's still very hard to see any kind of uh, movement in this uh, market that says that uh, um, economic conditions are improving. Um, I back to Apple, uh, I, you know, it, has it made any huge uh, sign, uh, not really, but at the same time, um, we've been talking about the weakness of a great many of the stocks in Apple's ecosystem, supply them with parts, and that normally uh, we may have seen the best in those because, of course, they order a lot of parts. Uh, China that assembles all the iPhones, of course, goes on vacation uh, late in January, and uh, they're down for about 10 days as everybody has their Christmas kind of vacation uh, in that country. And so you get a lot of products sold. You have to order parts early and make sure that they get them all manufactured before they go on vacation. So there is kind of a front-loaded effect to the way Apple has, and not uncommon to see a dip. Uh, there's also no uh, talk about a shipping date for the iWatch, and that has some Apple Watchers concerned. I just suspect that uh, this is going to be the big and last big upgrade cycle for Apple. It's going to be very, very hard in the future to get the same kind of bang for the buck. Um, the timing was just about as perfect as you could get. Uh, they were two years late with a, a large phablet-sized phone that they finally came out with. 
And uh, one of these days, if I just have a lot of extra time, I'll go back through all the times they said that there was no reason to have one, that it was too big, that you couldn't use it one-handed, um, all the other things. And now, of course, they have one, and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread from people that own them. But uh, for uh, years, we had to listen to spin that was uh, uh, even more hyperbolic than in a uh, election cycle. And, uh, yeah. Now everybody has them, but once they get them, the question is, how often will they need to update them? Uh, and my guess is that we're really getting to the point now where you go out and buy a Lamborghini or a high-end Ferrari, and you pay a couple hundred grand. Uh, basically, you pay another hundred grand to go two, three, four miles an hour faster, and then two hundred grand to go a couple miles an hour faster than that. And then 500 grand to go a mile and a half hour or two and a half miles an hour faster than that. And you get the diminishing returns. And uh, my guess is that we're probably seeing uh, Apple in some kind of long term cycle uh, pre split. Uh, we went above all those levels without the kind of volume you needed. I think, though, that uh, we are setting up for probably somewhere around a 115 close on Apple as we go into the new year. But certainly, eh, we'll have to see how that comes out. But I think what we're seeing here today is a little bit of uh, pre-jitters. And I'm going to wa be watching options late tonight. Um, I'm thinking that this may be another good cycle uh, to be buying options in like we did in September and uh, cleaned house. But uh, it is setting up very well for individual stocks, I wouldn't say that uh, you want to get involved in the indexes that much. I don't think there's that much in there. But uh, I always like that song. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, I think Kim Carnes sang it, though. But there's one thing in there, the one line that's just brilliant. She says, uh, it's like uh, you're in a powder keg with uh, and giving off sparks and that's pretty much what it is you're surrounded by dynamite and tnt and gunpowder and uh, you got a sparkler in your hand with this high of short interest uh going into what's going to be a very quiet market probably starting i'm going to say after wednesday i mean we've got a little volume today but that's with some action uh the question is what's going to happen uh, we, of course, have a lot of action uh, in the IBB, uh, mostly based on uh, Merck buying Cubis. So I think that was about $9.5 billion for the buyout there. So that puts some juice under all these biotechs and uh, pharmaceuticals uh, that uh, are continuing buyout targets. Uh, but uh, you got a bit, a, bit, a bit of that. You got uh, the Lockhart thing, which I think is going to move the market for the next uh, oh, maybe two hours. Uh, coming into tomorrow, I think that this will be forgotten. But we are going into that uh, options expiration cycle, and that's probably what's going to drive this market all the way into the 19th. As always, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can post a message in the den. And what else do we have going on out here? Of course, in this day in 1941, the Japanese have bombed, 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 bombed Pearl Harbor. And it filters through the market. The S&P drops 4.37% in one of its worst one-day declines ever. Uh, and, of course, uh, didn't really do a lot of much except in industrials uh, for, uh, what, seven, six years? I think it was mid-1946 before it started really getting going again. Uh, there was always the option we had to lose the war. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think we were all in on that one. And, uh, since then it's been tough to get us all in on any one particular thing. Um, anyway, uh, that's pretty much, uh, what's going on with that. I wanted to get into some of the stocks that are moving this market. So we'll go right to that. Uh, MCD, which is McDonald's, um, huge pop down, of course, on earnings. Uh, but, uh, 
you know, you had a fairly good test out here. I think we brought this up on the show um, two weeks ago, and that was uh, this uh, September 29th high at $97.30. It was 16 million shares on, you know, on September 29th, uh, $97.30. We got 20 cents above it on November 21st with 10 million shares. And uh, for a big stock like this, a pretty good indication there just wasn't the kind of uh, volume you needed. Energy wasn't all that way on the ba- bad on the way up. Uh, of course, we've got some fairly decent volume out here today, and I think there's a bad tick up here to 97, but it's been in this 92, 93 range uh, out here mostly today. But uh, as we uh, take a look at this, uh, pretty much a signy is setting up for a test of the October 16th low at $89.34. But um, eh, maybe maybe a buy. This thing just looks like it's in a big trading range, like a great deal of the stocks out here. Another one that's uh, hitting the Dow today is CVX. Of course, crude, as we spoke, uh, coming down and hitting some more lows out here at that $63.31 right now. Uh, very tough to figure out uh, that we're going to be getting uh, going anywhere soon. Uh, oh, on copper, at least the big contract off another buck sixty-five, So uh, off another one and a half cents or 1.6 cents on copper but uh, that's awful hard for me to get excited about uh, any of these markets as long as we see copper some of these other ones down here on these lows i am in the uh deflation camp as long as all these metals continue to show uh weakness in this market kind of interesting also to see how weak the junior miners are or were today, uh, even with gold going a little higher. Of course, gold is a little higher, $16.50, um, mostly after that weakness also. And uh, I think the proof of the pudding is going to be a test of about uh, 12 25 in gold. And that's probably going to tell us what we're going to get out of gold uh, for the coming months. So I'm watching with bated breath. Yes, I'm putting a small worm on my tongue uh, during every break. And we do that uh, just so I can have bated breath. Anyway, um, Chevron was one of them. Uh, looking at this thing, certainly going to go through this uh, previous low of October 15th, 106.65 on Chevron. And we've gone below it with 20 cents, 9.1 million shares so far. So the volume is a little lighter, as should be expected this time of year. Uh, but the real question is, what this, is this going to look like by the end of the day? We're off 19 points on the S&P cash and uh, 2.37 billion shares. So volume is at least a little better. Uh, but uh, normally we get uh, these down days and they don't even last the day. My guess is that we're in this lower trading range from about 2050 to 2070 uh, through what will probably be expiration uh, rollover on Wednesday. We will be back in just a minute. In the meantime, you certainly have the ability to give me a ring, 877-927-6648. I would appreciate it. I want to talk to somebody. Be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we come back off 18 points on the S&P Cash, 2.4 billion in shares. And uh, as I've said over the last uh, probably four six weeks it's going to be incredibly hard to get this market to sell off and you know 18 points down may be one of the best opportunities you get for high volatility between now and the end of the year probably going to have some on wednesday as options roll over uh but uh i digress there's a few plays out here i didn't think i was going to get any and i spent a lot of time over the weekend looking at some charts and uh you know, there's a lot out there that's very interesting, actually. But I just need a little more. Uh, probably Wednesday, I think. I'm probably going to get to them. But I think that there's going to be some very interesting plays over the last uh, eight trading days, maybe seven trading days. And I'm waiting for those to flesh themselves out. But, uh, eh, I digress. Anyway, we've got uh, some nice movement out here in the market at least today and you've got to thank your lucky stars because this is a tough time to make money in the stock market uh, but uh, if you were along the IBB you certainly were right uh, anyway if you were along JC Penny uh, not so right uh, JC Penny is down uh, volume is not really increased it's back finally uh, at the support level uh, that you would normally see uh, this thing gapped up with a huge volume and a huge move 
on the 27th of February with 114 million shares. We are back finally into that gap. Volume is fairly light. Um, I don't think they're going to have a good Christmas. At least the stock market doesn't think so. And I'm more than willing to believe the stock market over what C some CEO would say. I know they're going to have to close some stores, so probably some more bad news coming out here. Technically, not a bad-looking chart right here. Um, if it would base out for a while, probably going to take three, six months to do that. If it could base out in that $6 range, it would not be a bad-looking chart maybe as little as two months but uh right now um you have to wait for that to base out uh i think there's this thought especially in traders that everything's going to be a v bottom and after you come off pretty hard like this uh, you got to wait a long time for those folks to give up on the story and for the stock to get boring and no one to care anymore uh, as long as they continue, and a lot of times I've watched CNBC uh, just to see what they're talking about. And once they quit talking about stocks like this, I probably start really getting another view of them and saying maybe all the selling's done out here. It's hard for me to see how they totally go out of business, but certainly on my list of The Walking Dead. And uh, technically, not bad. Um but, boy, I tell you, they've got so many things going against them. But uh, I like it against this high volume gap up. I like it against this last spike down on October 15th that had 22 million shares. 13.5 um, is not that bad so far today. If you got uh, 18, you'd still be down four. And, again, against the major one at 114 back from the 27th of February. So not a bad-looking chart out here. Uh, other big high flyers that are being discussed a lot is Mobileye, uh, M-B-L-Y. Uh, I think someone called us uh, maybe a month ago. Has it been six weeks? Kind of might have to go back and look at a lot of these. Uh, the question is, what did I th where did I think this w stock was going? And I said, you really had to watch out about um, the lockup period on this. Uh, and uh, f as far as I could tell, this thing was in a big trading range from about 45 to 60 bucks. And why you had a little spike down down here to 39.25, uh, this thing's back in the trading range once again. Uh, some negative news out today and one of the uh, bigger movers out here. Uh, we will update. Have uh, Larry from Michigan said, would you take a look at MZOR? It's a medical device company. They make a robotic guidance system for spinal surgery, over $1 million per device. It was in a small profit last year, but got out too early, been uh, stocking it ever since. What are, are your thoughts? MZOR. You can be like Larry and email me at path at tnfn.com. Uh, I'd have to tell you that there's something big going on in this medical device business and talk more about it when we come back. But I looked at a couple of articles, especially down here in Florida, uh, about what's going on with, uh, AD, uh, not ADA, Florida, ACA. And uh, there's a lot of dark clouds on the horizon, so we'll be back and talk about that. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a high highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we uh, come back, uh, looking at a market that's uh, trying to bounce a little out here. Uh, 2059 on the S&P cash, now just off a little less than 16 points. On the S&P cash, 2.5 billion shares as we hit the bottom of the hour. Anyway, we said we looked at uh, Mazer Robotics, MZOR, and not a bad looking chart out here. Decent volume, nice move up out here but uh looks to me like this thing's probably in a bigger trading range too uh thirteen dollars fifteen cents on the high and nine dollars sixty three cents on the low uh what i was going to say is i'm wondering how these stocks are going to react um i'm tr trying to remember the name of the guy uh, who's the mit professor in the crosshairs but he's going to be on Capitol Hill for the next two days, uh, uh, and uh, some are going to be getting their pound of flesh. He uh, famously announced uh, how they had to lie to uh, pass the act. Uh, they also are going to go after him because, of course, he was receiving $400,000 and didn't disclose it to anybody uh, when he was trying to push the ACA. So... Um, the question is just how far is this? Uh, it's more of a political issue, and I can tell you right now, I don't know which way that was going to go. And one thing I like to know is kind of the lay of the land, and I, it's just hard for me to see. I do know that uh, there's been a great deal of articles uh, from newspapers that lean to the left down here in Florida. saw a lot of those articles over the weekend. 
Uh, and uh, they were not kind to, to the ACA. And, uh, you know, normally uh, we've got a pretty willing press, especially on the East Coast of Florida down here. So I'd say that any of these medical stocks, uh, probably for the next two days, I don't see a lot coming out of them. I don't see a lot of downside. My question would be, as we get into the new Congress, the last uh, seat in the uh, Senate was decided on Saturday, uh, pretty much a uh, huge win. What is it, a 15 or 17 point win? Uh, so that uh, pretty much it locks up Congress. And you're not going to see any change in that in two years. And uh, there's more than enough uh, buffer out there where they're not going to get uh, one Weasley senator to jump from one party to the next and change the balance of the power in that. Um, and so you, okay, you have pretty much strong battle lines. Uh, I suspect we're going to have a lot of fireworks in that. In the first part of the year, I think we're probably going to have it. They're trying to do everything to make sure it keep it quiet, I think, through the Christmas holidays. But I think it will come back in a vengeance in January. And all of these things uh, will probably be revisited. You also have the opportunity for, I think, four different cases uh, to blow up the ACA. And um, if we think that it's probably bad now, it may be incredibly worse as we go into next year, if all this stuff is just uh, torn apart, no one really knows which way to go. Um, that would be my problem with all of these healthcare stocks, and that is that I don't know which way it's going to go uh, fundamentally, and I have a feeling that no one else does, and that means technically that they're probably uh, going to be tough. This thing's in a nice trading range, may make some wonderful products. I just don't like that whole sector with all the indecision available uh, politically in that sector. Um, I think there's a lot of money to be made. Maybe if you were a healthcare professional, you'd want to call in to the show and maybe tell me how this is all going to sort out. But to me, I kind of like knowing how things are going to sort out. Um, I mean, for two years, we talked about people wanting to buy coal at the Lowe's. And I said, I just don't understand how you could do it. Fundamentally, you had a president who said he was going to destroy and bankrupt the coal market. I don't know how you go long coal with that fundamental factor in your face. Um, you want the wind at your back. And uh, certainly you don't want the politicians at your door uh, if you're a company like that deciding who's going to win or lose. Uh, we also have a great deal, many more EPA people coming in uh, and 3,500 new regulations uh, coming in at the first of the year. Um, I'm trying to weasel through my way through those and see who they will affect. Um, there's always a winner and loser in those decided by politicians. And uh, that's another thing that you want to be watching. Some of them are kind of uh, inane so far. Um, one of the ones is if you've ever flipped a a piece of electronics over um, and seen all the little CE and all the other little symbols stamped on them. Um, one of the regulation changes and was signed by the president last week was that all those symbols can just be in the window when it boots. It doesn't have to be stamped all over the product anymore, which is kind of interesting. Um, but uh, some of them are benign like that. Some of them are going to add a great deal of cost. And since no one's really seen these 3,500, they're all going to be dropped on us probably between Christmas and New Year's when no one wants to be looking at them, a favorite uh, tactic of politicians. Um, and that's going to be some of the things you want to look at uh, and read if you're playing a particular stock. Just make sure that nothing happened uh, significantly in the regulation side of the business. And because uh, it does matter you know, to people that say that that uh, politics in trading does not matter. It is huge. Had a gentleman ask, ask me uh, this weekend why he never started a hedge fund. And I said, well, by the time I probably was qualified to do so, uh, you have to start with about two hundred million dollars right now because of the regulatory issues. I had a friend that started in 2008 or nine. Uh, started his own hedge fund to uh, trade uh, almost all uh, Pacific Rim um, markets. 
And he had a fairly decent uh, amount of cash to start off with, 50 or $70 million uh, worth of investors uh, that wanted to get started in this hedge fund. Uh, but uh, when I talked to him last, he had closed the hedge fund because break-even was about $120 million for him. And uh, $120 million was, if he was still doing well, much less if they had a bad year in the market. But they needed about $120 million just to break even with the regulatory issues. And that's going to be another thing going forward. Anyway, uh, you can always give me a call and or be like Larry and email me. But uh, um, I'm just going to say you're going to have volatility in these things. And the word on the street when they say it is, it's called headline risk, and that would be one of the problems uh, that I would see. Uh, one of the things, if you are trading stocks like this, you'd probably want to look at uh, ISRG and take a look and see how it's doing. Uh, this thing's hanging up here at the highs, um, but what I dislike is this thing had a huge move down with heavy volume. Uh, it had a nice gap up on energy, uh, but... Uh, you're really not seeing a lot of juice as this thing gets back up here. Um, I would say that uh, I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I would say that your MZOR is likely to trade very much like intuitive surgical uh, in this field. And, uh, you know, this thing can it drift back up to this uh, 541.23, the April 3rd high. I think it could. But, boy, you're going to need some energy out of these stocks up here. And like I said, I have a feeling that we're probably like ISRG um, going to look at some kind of pullback early in the year. In fact, ISRG, if it would test the 541.23, I would really like to see in a play back down to probably about 420 uh, as it would come back and fill about half that gap. So uh, feel free. As always, uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Or email me, as Larry did, at Path of TFNN, or post a message in the den. Although it's very quiet out here, but I can hear you breathing. So that's all that matters. Uh, let's look at a few of my stocks uh, that have been making tests. And uh, uh, very interesting to see a few of these. Uh, the one that uh, is uh, screaming out here to me uh, that it's in a probably larger trading range is Altera, A-L-T-R. Uh, love this thing. It had a huge gap up on September 19th. Not gap up. Had a huge move up on September 19th, but sold off that day. 9.2 million shares. Got to $37.63. Now, the last, let's go through the last three days of trading. 2.5 million shares, 1.7 million shares. We got 1.4 million shares so far today. Uh, going up against that uh, 9.2 million share day. Um, even if you want to use uh, the more uh, or, uh, you know, what would you say, it, uh, the more bullish case, the March 21st low up at the same area, 6.5 million shares, and you still don't have that. Now, that doesn't mean this stock is either going to pull back down or retrace. It just means that I suspect between now and the first of the year, extremely light um, energy to the upside and more likely a sideways action into this market, even though it's got a doji out here. Uh, other stocks of interest, uh, soda. A few of these stocks are making some lows or making patterns that make me think we could get some lows. Uh, one of those is SodaStream, of course, an Israeli uh, company. And um, I think a lot of people have been worried about the conditions over there, uh, rightly so. Um, but it also, whether or not you have a, a uh, idea here that you can see uh, a bottom starting to form. And again, uh, as often as I say, not all of these have to be the bottoms. A lot of times they're going to bounce along the uh, bottom rung uh, for a while uh, before the, they bottom out. Now, if I'm wrong about uh, a sell-off after the first of the year, I think you may have three to six months on SodaStream out here if it can continue to uh, base out around this $20 level. You had a huge gap down, monstrous volume. It got to $20.13. Uh, that was on October 13th. Um, we haven't quite hit that. I'd like to see that low hit. We got to 2020 so far today. Uh, but the volume has certainly shrunk. We don't have a lot. Uh, if this thing can go sideways for two, three, four weeks, 
and nothing really happens, and then you get a bunch of dojis. Maybe you got somebody coming in here to buy these things at the lows, and uh, maybe it makes a lot more sense for someone to buy this stock out. Of course, a lot of these huge moves in, so to stream, were talks of buyout, um, but maybe at a lower price, maybe it starts to make sense out here. Yandex, which is one of the bigger uh, Russian stocks, uh, was watching this. It came right into the gap down. Uh, that last gap was uh, tested on uh, April 25th, $21.70 with 28 million shares. Um, we've blown through that even with lighter volume and gone lower today. Let's get a little longer uh, chart out here. Uh, but... Um, Everything's said that this stock should hold, uh, but uh, I guess conditions in Russia are probably getting worse, not better uh, economically. But certainly this is all the way back now uh, to the April 22nd, 2013th low. And uh, those conditions probably not going to get any better. Uh, see what we have in the next wave down. You know, you've got a $16.65 low from June 14th of uh, 2012. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that with continuing pressure uh, from the West on uh, these Russian stocks. Sandisk uh, off uh, a little uh, in the morning. I was kind of interested to see how this thing did. And uh, even with the uh, downside of today, um, continues to look fairly good. Uh, what I really look on this one is the... Uh, June 17th SmackDown, or actually July 17th SmackDown. Uh, that came down on 29.6 million shares. Uh, it's come back into it to 104.37 on September 19th. Um, and then kind of did its ABC down all the way down to the gap. It filled it. It's gone all the way back up. Um, probably in a much bigger trading range, too. But uh, 106.64 today as its high, 3.3 million shares so far. Certainly not enough to come up against this. And even if you just look at the high of July 16th, 8.2 million shares, um, you're basically going to probably go up and hang around these. This is one of the biggest winners of the last couple of years, and a lot of people willing to hang on to this, I think, through the end of the year. So not looking for a lot of weakness and not getting it in SanDisk uh, today. Petrobras, of course, uh, not liking the... What is it? Uh, Sixty. Where's that at? Sixty-three seventeen uh, on West Texas uh, futures. And uh, yeah, I mean, what can you say? This thing's blown through some lows. The only thing is uh, today, volume is at least blowing through in Petrobras uh, on lighter volume. The last major low was the November eighteenth low with sixty-seven million shares. We're through it with twenty-eight million shares. Uh, but again, there's no signal out here to say that we want to go long and maybe volume comes in the next couple of days. But if this is an ABC down, it's an ABC down to zero. So my guess is that um, you want to be watching uh, for a reversal in crude. Maybe there'd be some kind of uh, uh, problem in the Gulf, uh, maybe in Nigeria uh, to get this thing going. But certainly no sign of it in technical terms that we've made a low in crude yet. And uh, actually breaking down here and opening up at the or at closing at the lows of crude makes me think that we've got uh, maybe a little bit more weakness over the next couple of days. I don't think this is going to flip on a dime. And uh, hopefully it's not in your pocket if a car tries to stop on it. Thank you. We'll be back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months, for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. Not all gold stocks are the same. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. The sale will be over before you know it, so act now and lock in this incredible price by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. That's right. After this show, of course, Tom O'Brien wraps it up with a couple of hours. Uh, closes up the market and tells us what happened in a day in review in some of the uh, stocks with earnings that have come out. Uh, but uh, I digress. Andy Heck has some uh, new articles on Seeking Alpha. Uh, the only thing I disagree with is the title. He had one on their natural gas. I wanted to tell him that he needed to have the title. Um, Winter is not over until the fat lady is shivered. Of course, a reference to uh, the uh, great German opera from Wagner. And, uh, you know, there's some other ones out there that I could think of fairly quickly. But uh, well, that was one I thought of. The other thing was that you could say winter is coming if you're a big fan of uh, Game of Thrones. They keep saying that winter is coming. Seems like it's been coming forever. But one guy has been shivering up north for the last two seasons. But... Uh, I digress. I guess that's coming back next spring, so or next summer. So it'll be interesting to see how they wrap that show up. Uh, other things of interest out here, of course, um, 
Yeah, we're only off about uh, 12 and a half points on the S&P cash now at uh, 2062. No big surprise, 2.65 billion shares. Um, again, in a fairly tight range, I don't want to get too froggy, but I have a feeling that we're setting up for some nice moves uh, starting on Wednesday. We'll probably uh, start at least moving some of these stocks uh, that have super high short interest on lighter volume. I suspect if that's going to happen, start looking for lighter volumes tomorrow. Um, well, I'll write this down. We've got uh, 2.66 billion shares as we exit the show. Um, let's, uh, let's take a little wager here and say that we've got uh, 2.4, 2.3 billion shares tomorrow. I think we're, we're seeing kind of the ends of volatility in this market. Big volatility, anyway, except in certain stocks that have high short interest uh, into the end of the year. So uh, probably the opportunity to make some stuff. Wanted to look at Apple real quick, at least in the charts. Again, uh, like I said, uh, I'd seen a lot of these stocks that had been in Apple's ecosystem. Um, and certainly, Apple has never made it easy short it um even when all the stocks uh, in its ecosystem that fed it parts looked horrible uh there was no great technical indicator that said uh, it had moved uh off the highs um what you can look for what i am looking for is a close back above either a nine day moving average or a three by three moving average and then a close back below it so um could we see moves back up and then a move back down i think we could probably won't be shorting apple i think there are a lot more weaker stocks and of course they'll be pounding the table uh, all the way into spring that the iWatch is going to uh, mean that they're going to go double or triple or 400 times what they are today uh, there will be no end to the amount of a hyperbole, hyper, uh, hyperbole for those people in lutes. Uh, but it is interesting uh, nonetheless. But, uh, you know, even now, we, we kind of have a signal that maybe we've got this top in. But my guess is that we've got one more little spike out of this thing, maybe into the new year. And then maybe uh, a sell-off that could go all the way into June, but it's going to be light and slow. Uh, I imagine that this is going to be uh, and continue to be the control rod in the nuclear reaction of the uh, tech stocks. Uh, but when we lose this, this uh, stock, um, and could it take the entire markets with it? I think that there's more than enough chance. Anyway, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember, you can sell when you need to before you have to. And hang on for the Tom O'Brien Show. See you tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.